Hey my good friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. I've been spending the week with the all new 2018 Hyundai Elantra GT, the five door hatch version of the very popular Elantra sedan. So I'm gonna give you a good look at it inside and out, take you for a test drive and tell you what it's really like to live with. As we talk about styling, you'll see right there in the face that this has the latest design DNA from Hyundai, the latest version of what they call fluidic sculpture design. And that's most evident in the grill where we've got some intricate detail there, but it has a little bit more of an hourglass shape, as you can see, not quite as straight edged as the Hyundai grills of before. Now, because we're on the base model GT, we've got projector beam headlights, but down below that you will see LED daytime running lights which light up pretty bright during the daytime and give this car a nice signature. Also in the front fascia you'll notice some vents there on the outboard corners and that's for the air curtains. Right here at the back of the wheel lip there are another pair of vents where air comes around the wheel and that creates a nice aerodynamic stability around the tires which helps fuel economy as well as stability at high speed. Tires and wheels on this one, these are 17 inch alloy wheels with some healthy sized tires on them. Pretty nice for a base model. 18 inch wheels are available on the upper grade Sport. From this angle, you can see that this is a lot more than just a Hyundai Elantra sedan without a trunk. They've actually given it unique sheet metal and its own silhouette. And in that silhouette, you can see this does have the European styling that Hyundai was after, especially back here in this rear window has a nice rounded, somewhat formal look to it, and that ties into the rear hatch, which has a little bit of a more straight up type of angle than you might find with some of the competitors that have more of a rake to them. And that pays off in the rear cargo area, which is best in class, and we'll get to that when we talk about the interior. But that rear hatch does open nice and wide. The taillights here on this car, non-LED, you can get LED taillights with the package here, or if you go up to the higher trim grade. Down on the lower fascia, you're going to see a pretty plain wrapper down there. They didn't put exhaust tips on this one, and they didn't even try with fakes or anything like that. It's just nicely done, very, very tidy. Behind the wheel of the Elantra, just like on the outside, the first thing you'll notice here is the fact that this is simply not just a sedan without a trunk. In fact, this is a completely different interior than the standard Elantra. The design is different. And dare I say it, the materials are of a much higher quality. This is a vehicle that's really more akin to the mid-grade of what you might find in the sedan in terms of quality and design. And the materials for the most part, we've got soft materials here on the door, on the top of the dash. We do have hard plastics down on the lower console and some of the lower extremities on the door panels. And right here in front of me, I do have a plastic steering wheel. One thing I do want to complain about just a little bit is, as I run my hands around the steering wheel, I can feel the mold marks. There's some rough spots on here where they obviously broke this away from a sprue or something like that. A couple little things like that where now the rough edges show just a little bit, but it is a well-functioned steering wheel. It's got buttons here on both sides for both the controls and the instrument cluster. And through that steering wheel, the instrument cluster, very nice for this price range, very Germanic in its design. It's basic. There is a center screen there where you can customize it for different information sets. It's not the full color that you find in the upgrade model, but it is very nice starting out for the base. Center stack, very simple. I have a floating information screen here for the infotainment system, which we'll talk about here in a moment. Down in the center, I've got HVAC controls. On this one, they're manual, not climate control, although it looks just like climate control. You just don't have the digital readouts. And when it comes to storage, we've got a pretty good deal here for a compact car. A large bin down here in the center for your phone. Even larger phones than mine can fit down here. Auxiliary port, USB port, two 12-volt charging ports, your shifters in the center, and then down here low, off to the side, you've got big cup holders for those tall cups and you can have those big tall 44 ounce cups here and they're not going to be in the way of your shifter. I love it when they design this way. Inside the console, more storage in here. Not the largest in class. There's room for one water bottle in there if you sort of cock it sideways. Maybe some sunglasses as well, but not the largest place you're going to find in class. But this is a very comfortable place to be. These are cloth seats standard and they're very handsome I'd say. It's got a nice cloth as standard equipment and on this particular model with the tan I've got a two-tone treatment with accent stitching. Very pleasing to the eye and they hold you nice and tight almost like aggressive sports seats but not aggressive. 
Sitting in the back seat here, you can see that there's reasonably good room for this size class. My knees are not up against the back of these seats. They're about halfway forward, halfway back, except for my height, about 5'9". Headroom, pretty good. I've got about 3 to 4 inches above my head. And as I sit here, the one thing I will point out is that I feel a little bit bunched up here. The way the seat's laid out, it's, it's actually not that low, but the way it's shaped and formed, I feel like I'm kind of being folded a little bit. So not the most comfortable seat in the world for full-sized adults. There are a number of features back here that make it comfortable though. I've got a fold-down armrest here in the center as well as mat pockets, nice nets that have a nice look to them. No vents though. So if I were back here on a hot day in Arizona, there are no HVAC vents for me back here to help keep me cool. I really would have to depend on those up front. Now this seat does fold down in a 60-40 split like you'd expect in a hatch like this for a pretty flat load floor. We've got 25 cubic feet when the seats are up, and when they're down, we've got a full 55 cubic feet, virtually top of class. Underneath that rear deck back there is also a compact spare tire, something I always like to see in a car. When it comes to rating this interior, overall, it's very well executed. It's got a nice look and feel to it. I love these cloth seats. Very comfortable for the front seat passengers, and the materials for the most part are quite good. Switch gear, very good. Storage could be a little bit better, and the material quality, while it is good for the most part, we do lose a star because of that steering wheel feeling the mold marks on the back of it. So this interior gets four out of five stars. When it comes to the infotainment system, Hyundai's really done something special here in my opinion. They've given us a large 8-inch touchscreen as standard, and it's fully featured as well. It's got AM, FM, Sirius XM satellite radio, Bluetooth of course, and it also has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And this is all in the standard base model. A lot of cars in this class at this price don't offer this. In fact, some don't offer it at any price. And so that's a pretty good level of standard equipment to start out with. The graphics are very good and it's easy to use because there's hard controls on both sides for a lot of the common use functions as well as volume and tuning. My pet peeve, I'm glad they're there because some of the competitors out there they don't have that and it makes it very difficult if not frustrating to use these things on a daily basis. Now is it perfect? No. One of the things it does do is every time you start the car it starts with a home screen which if you like to have your radio presets the first thing you see you always have to go page to that. It doesn't leave it where you last left it when you turn the car off and that's something that a lot of the car makers are starting to do now. They create this new home screen just like when you log on to Windows and I hate it. I hate it. But outside that one complaint, this is a very good system, especially considering that it's the standard base system in this car. Very, very good. In fact, I'd say probably best in class as the base audio and infotainment system. It gets five out of five stars. The base engine we get here in the United States for the Hyundai Launcher GT is the two liter four cylinder with direct injection. Here in my tester, it's made it to a six speed automatic transmission, but you can get a manual still available. In this particular car, with this transmission, however, it's rated by the EPA at 24 MPG City, 32 MPG Highway, and 27 MPG Combined. So the question I always ask when I start these things out is, how does it go? Woo, a little bit of wheel spin there. And we're revving all the way to 6,500. Up and 60. Almost missed it. And now 80 curve coming up, slows down, hits those brakes. So this thing's actually got pretty remarkable power for a base model, 161 horsepower, doesn't sound like a lot, but you get in a car that doesn't weigh a lot, doesn't have a lot of stuff in it, works pretty well, I think. And the best part about this is it's got a nice sound and a nice refinement to it. Even better is the fact that it's got a real transmission. You can get a six-speed manual here or a six-speed automatic. They don't stick you with a CVT like some of the competitors do, which is a wonderful thing if you really enjoy getting out and driving. And, and that's really what this car does well, especially on sport mode. Hammer down. Woo! This thing just goes. So I'm very happy with this powertrain and fuel economy. 90. Let me slow down a little bit here. Fuel economy rated at 27 mpg, I actually got 30 for the week, in spite of the fact that I'm driving like an ass here. Um, very, very impressed with this powertrain. Very good for the money. Really, it would be good up for another up close to $30,000. Very impressed. Five out of five stars. 
When it comes to ride and handling, what they've done here to start with is a tighter, stiffer body structure. Now using 53% high strength steel, this body is actually 22% stiffer than the one it replaces and actually about 60 pounds lighter. And what that does when you start bolting tires and wheels and suspension to it is give you a bit of a tighter feel overall and that's definitely what I'm noticing here. Out here on this desert highway, not the smoothest pavement in the world and so a lot of bumps gives me a good idea of how well sorted and tuned it is and what I'm finding here is that using the drive modes and adjusting the steering feel does give you a little bit of a variety but one of the things I would point out is that the steering does have sort of a lifeless feel to it very typical of electric power steering out there tight though nonetheless this does have a little bit of a heavy feel that is typical of Korean cars. And the one thing I'd point out here is that the rear suspension on this particular model is the low budget torsion beam variety. If you want a multi-link, it's a little bit more sophisticated and has a little bit more finesse on bumpy curves, you'd have to step up to the sport with the turbocharger to get that. But here we have the torsion beamer axle, which on a bumpy curve is somewhat like wearing combat boots to the dance. So chassis here gets four out of five stars. Quality is a very important topic to me. I really go over these cars with a fine tooth comb, looking at the body panel fit and alignment, the paint finish, the materials. Does it rattle and squeak? What do the doors sound like when you slam them? Very important things to me. I'm a little bit OCD on this kind of stuff. This car, very, very good in almost all respects. Even the warranty coverage here, best in the business, 100,000 mile powertrain warranty. You can't beat that anywhere. So very impressed with the quality here. Five out of five stars. As I said at the outset, I love it when an automaker gives me a base model. It really shows me what people are actually going to be buying, not some leather-clad, fully optioned thing that really masks what might be deficiencies in a vehicle. So as I look at this one right here, we talked about everything that was good and a few of the things that well, could be better. I think it's a great package for this price at $21,000 and some change. Nice infotainment system, nice cloth on the seats, the chassis, even though it's not tip-top when it comes to tech, it works pretty well and it feels a quality. So value, I put it five stars. When you put that in with everything we've already talked about, we're at four and a half stars for the review. Very good. I'm Sam Haymar for Test Driven TV. I hope you enjoyed the ride. Well, my friends, if you enjoyed the test drive you just saw, I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can do that by clicking on the big round logo right there or click right there, see our latest video. Either way, stay tuned.